Hello and welcome back to the Project Hercules Diaries where we have the gearbox in place mocked up with the end with the gearbox plate behind the engine and everything is where it will be all lined up nicely now i've got one engine plate in here i haven't got the other one in the other side because it won't fit in that gap to line things up i've had to move the gearbox towards me uh, about um, five millimeters so what i'm going to do is to make one of these plates in aluminium make another one the other side in aluminium and this one will be about 12 mil thick that one will be about 8 mil thick and I'll just take a little bit off the thickness of this piece here that will line everything up nicely now with this being shiny aluminium and this being steel I might do something with the shape of this edge of the plate so it's not just a a big slab but that's just aesthetics to do later so how do you know that everything's lined up well i use my trusty spirit level to demonstrate this and bear with me because you may not be able to see that clearly with the phone but i'll do my best okay so this spirit level is 50 mil wide and that means it's the same thickness as the belt or the same width as the belt so you can see from the top run of that spirit level that it is running pretty much parallel to the bottom frame rail, parallel to the ground, and parallel to the plates that hold the gearbox on, which is what I wanted. So I think the height of the gearbox is okay for now. Um, the width of the belt is the same as the width of this spirit level. So if I look down from the top, the rear pulley on the clutch is slightly narrower and that is completely covering both sides of it so it's about central to the clutch and the front pulley is slightly wider between the flanges than the drive belt so that isn't in the center but it isn't touching both sides and if I look at the run of that um, spirit level it's about parallel to the bottom frame rail so it should all be straight so that's how I've lined up uh, the front pulley the second part of the job is to make sure that when the chains are on it doesn't uh, hit the rear mudguard on either side or hit the um, tire rub on the tire so I've got the I've got the high gear sprocket there this I would imagine is slightly wider than a, than a good thickness chain so if I put that by eye centrally on the sprocket and then I line up by eye the um, spirit level so it's about parallel to the bottom frame rail which my guess is it's about there you can see that there is clearance there between the chain and the mudguard and there's clearance um, pretty much all round so that's okay obviously with a rear sprocket on 44 teeth it's going to be slightly higher so that raises the rear chain perhaps to something like that the bottom of the spirit level is where the chain ring will be it doesn't look like it's going to soar through the bottom of the tank but i'm going to get the tank back tomorrow from raw steel choppers so i can fit the tank i've got a pair of 44 tooth sprockets on order for the rear so i can put those on put a bit of old chain across and make sure that i'm not going to saw the tank in half and i do exactly the same around the other side of the bike which is here this is the other side of the bike and I do exactly the same as before. So I just put this spirit level across the, this will be the low speed or first gear. So just with, by feel, I might make sure that it's central to the sprocket itself. And then by eye looking down on the top of the frame rail, I just get that so it's roughly parallel by eye to the bottom frame rail. And it looks like it is. And there's clearance there for the chain so what I, what I can probably do worst case I can put a little scallop in here if there isn't that much clearance or I could use this to mount the chain guard so I've got something to protect both of my legs should the chain let go so that's what's happening with the gearbox I think um, from my perspective aesthetically uh, it looks quite pleasing it's not too bad at all the other thing that has been going on is on the messy bench this is the messy bench and I really should sort that out. So after an enormous amount of faffing around, there is now a starter motor on here that does not shoot the end out to engage a pinion gear. There is no end float in this. There's a spacer inside that stops it moving out. 
uh, and their, their little plastic lever, which was this thing here, has been removed. So when the solenoid energizes, it connects the, um, the high current, uh, makes a high current switch in here, but it doesn't pull the lever. It doesn't shoot this forward as it would do in a car. So that, that is permanently fixed in that in that orientation there. I've got a 12 tooth, a 13 tooth and a 14 tooth sprocket so I can play with those. What I can do is press one of these on here temporarily just to see if this has got enough guts to start the engine or turn the engine over. Although this has got a one way clutch in it, I can feel it because it's easier to turn one way than the other. That way engages the gears of the of the starter motor i'm also planning to use this one-way clutch bearing as well just to help it it does look a little bit on the small side uh, for the amount of torque i'm putting through it but it's the only one that i've got any chance of pressing onto here the other ones that you can buy commercially are, are much bigger internal diameters and they'll be a bit more faffing around so we'll try that to start with and if it's not up to the job well we try something else so that's what's been going on at the moment in the uh, in the garage as usual well you know it by now as usual thank you for watching and more updates will follow